Hello, welcome to Electronics Education. I'm Vincent Chan. Today, we are going to start a new series on the subject of small signal model of semiconductor devices, basically cover the MOSFET and the BJT. So MOSFET is going to go first. Alternating current AC analysis and the small signal basics, part one. There are three lectures around this topic, AC analysis and the small signal basics. MOSFET, transconductance. And the next one, I'm gonna talk about the BJT's transconductance. And the third lecture is gonna be the key concept around the AC analysis. And some of the puzzle that the most uh, engineers or students are struggling. Will be unveiled in the third lecture. The first one is transconductance. Transconductance. You see a MOS MOSFET circuit. So now, assuming the MOSFET is in saturation region, is in the saturation region. So first of all, make sure you can differentiate those three types of variable okay so let's talk about the vgs there are three types of vgs the the brown the star with brown means the dc and the blue means the ac and the black the lowercase variable with the capital subscript means the total instantaneous is the sum of the DC and the AC. So what is the definition of transconductance? If we, you apply an AC alternating current signal, voltage, VGS, and times, times the transconductance will show up at the output, becomes the output current. You see the output AC current. So it's the voltage, it's the current. Is the current there divided by the voltage here? Okay? So current divided by voltage is the conductance. And there's the meaning of there and the here, and the output and the input. So it's the transfer. So it's the transfer conductance, and it's called transconductance. So basically, we're going to prove this relationship. ID equals GM times VGS. When the device in what region? Saturation region. So in saturation region, large signal follows this. If we neglect the channel length modulation, it follows the square law, okay? Total instantaneous voltage follows this. So it's the square, it's the square law. It's a parabolic relationship between the ID and the VGS. Let's start with the DC part. Let's start with the DC part. So DC corresponds to the DC. Brown corresponds to the brown. This brown point, DC component, is called quiescent. It's called quiescent Q point. Q point. Time independent, DC operating point. And then let's superimpose an AC signal, see the blue one, AC, upon the DC. Let's superimpose the, the AC signal upon the DC. And then when the focus on the blue one, when the blue goes up and down, you see the time axis going down going down, right? So VGS going up and down, up and down. So alternating current, alternating current means what? AC means it repeatedly, continuously changing direction. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, okay? Positive in one direction and negative in the opposite direction. So repeatedly changing direction signal, the signal with repeatedly changing direction 
is the definition of so-called AC, alternating current signal, AC signal. So now it's the AC voltage, then, then, then what? Then point by point. Then the peak well, well, corresponds to the blue. Is the color is somewhere between blue and the green. I don't know how to call it. But you can call it blue or call it green. The one on the top, okay, and the the valley corresponds to the one on the bottom. But anyway, you know what I mean. And then you will create, you will create this type of up and down, up and down, and superimpose on the DC drain current. It's called the AC drain current. And then you send in another round of the VGS, right? Then you will see another round, another cycle of the ID. And then one more, and then you will see this. So up, down, up, down, you will see the ID and go in, thus create the same way. And then what? Then let's assume the AC signal is small. How small? How small? Compared to this. This can be proved mathematically. But I want to, my teaching is more focused on the concept. Okay? So I'm going to skip the mathematical derivation proof this. Let's just focus on the concept. So it's much less than to overdrive, okay? There's a definition about what is small, but this is the constraint, this is the condition, and this is the definition for a more or less small signal. So different devices have the different condition for the small signal. So small signal approximation, this is called the small signal approximation for the MOSFET. So under this condition, you can mathematically prove this. The second order, the second order. So think about it, it's a square law, right? So if you expand the whole mathematical relation, expression, then you will have the constant term. You have the linear term, and you will have the second order term, right? So under this, under this condition, the second order term can be neglected. And then the IC, and the VI, sorry, excuse me, I'm talking about <laughs> IC is the bipolar, now it's the MOSFET. So ID and the VGS can be approximated by a straight line. In other words, under this condition, the parabola around the two blue point can be treated can be approximated as a straight line. This is also the concept from the calculus. So if you learn ever learn about the calculus, you know what I mean. And then what? Then the slope of that straight line is defined as the transconductance. Okay? The slope of that straight line is defined as the transconductance. So therefore, if you look at the fo focus on the triangle, the, the, the purple triangle, so ID corresponds to the height of the triangle, and the VGS corresponds to the base of the triangle, and GM is the slope. So height divided by base is the slope. Right? Height divided by base is the slope from the geometry. That's the concept behind this ID, VGS, and the GM relationship. I want you to digest this to understand, really understand what is the definition of the transconductance, what is the geometrical interpretation from the ID VGS curve, all right? The ID AC, that's the relationship between link, the relationship between the 
output AC current and the input AC voltage. Now let's do a little bit of mathematical derivation to find out GM's formulation, the transconductance formulation. According to the concept of the calculus, well basically a straight line can be approached by the partial derivative, the derivative of at the Q point. So partial ID, partial VGS. So let's just take the derivative of this parabola. And then you will get this, right? So two becomes one. The power of two becomes, you know, derivative, right? So it becomes one and two canceled out the one over two. Then becomes this. This is the formulation for transconductance. So it's proportional to what? Overdrive. VGS minus VT. But if you want to express GM in terms of bias current, then you can do this. You can use this. Okay? So then it tells you that the transconductance will be proportional to what? The square root, square root of the bias current. Transconductance will be proportional to the square root of the bias current and square root of the channel width divided by channel length. Geometry ratio. Alright? Important important. So once you face an AC amplifier analysis that you need to figure out the AC transconductance, you have to start with the DC analysis first. You figure out what is the DC bias current and plug in this, what's the transistor's parameter, it will tell you the value for the transconductance. So here's the takeaway. So basically, you understand the definition of small signal, there's the relativity. Oh, there's no so-called absolute small signal. So different devices have a different definition for small signal. And then under the small signal constraint, condition, the nonlinear curve can, can be treated as a straight line around the small signal area. And then there's a linear relationship between the AC upper current and the AC input voltage and highlighted by the geometrical relationship from this purple triangle. All right, height divided by base equals the slope. So you input you send in the AC input voltage, modulate an AC input voltage, send in to the MOSFET. The device, as long as it's small signal, as long as the device is in the saturation region, you will be empowered, you will be multiplied by a quantity. Then send to the output. Send for the output, output AC current. And that quantity is defined as the transconductance. It's very important performance parameter for the AC signal linking the output and the input. The second, the AC parameters, AC, AC performance, AC behavior is determined by two things. Number one, DC bias, DC condition. Number two, Geometry. Of course, there's a number three, right? Mobility, electron mobility, and the gate oxide capacitance. So we now come to the end of the lecture. In the next lecture video, I'm going to teach you about the counterpart of the transconductance in the bipolar junction transistor. So see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.